heart of Silicon Valley. It's What's Up in the 90s. An entertaining look at people, places, and things, and how they affect you, your family, and your career as we move into the 90s. Now here's your host, Brian Stuckey. Hello, welcome to What's Up in the 90s. And uh, how many of you like kids out there? Well, we've got a children's program tonight. And, uh, you know, don't you let just love kids? Uh, could you get off my foot, please? <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but uh, we've got Julie Size with the Santa Clara Parks and Recreation with us tonight. Welcome, Julie. And Thank Dennis Atalagano, who's the uh, um, children's pastor over at uh, Bethel Church. As well as we've got some kids here with you that we'll have a chance to talk to them a little in the second half of the show. But first of all, I want to welcome you all here. And um, let's start with the meat and potatoes of things. What's, what's the children's program all about over at Santa Clara Parks and Recreation, Julie? Well, we have a lot of different programs for kids. We try to address children that have various needs, um, including children that are involved in the arts and theater, to sports emphasis, to arts, to just outdoor recreation, just about anything. If you have an interest, we have something to fill that interest. Okay. And Dennis, what would uh, entail in the Bethel Church Children's Ministries? Mainly, Brian, we're, we're there to, um, to train the children um, in the fundamentals of Christianity. And we do that with uh, a balance of uh, fun activities as well as uh, uh, Sunday, using Sunday school curriculum that's provided for the teachers to teach the children. Okay. How, do, how does someone get involved in your program then? Do they just show up or do they have to, have, um, do they have to go to that church in order to get involved in the program? Not at all, but 90, I would say 95% of the children that do uh, attend my, uh, our programs at Bethel Church are, um, their parents are members of the church. But um, there's constant visitors, there's that 5% of visitors that just are curious, they see the building, they see the sign out front, and, and they just uh, want to see what's happening inside. Plus others through word of mouth, the children themselves uh, that are excited about the programs at Bethel, they, they go and tell their friends and they invite their friends over and uh, they seem to like it and then in turn they bring their mom and dad and then they like the, the atmosphere of the church and they stay and the church increases. Okay. It's a, it's a large uh, group of children there. What, what kind of numbers do you see over there? Well, my area is from uh, infants, which is, I would say, zero birth to age 12. Go from, that's about sixth grade. And uh, if everybody was to show up on the uh, roll, I'd have over 500 children. Oh, wow. Okay. Julie, I know it's a big responsibility being, you know, Santa Clara is a large uh, city. And, uh, you know, it's a large responsibility over there. I know you have gobs of children coming over. Uh, what's it take for a child to get involved? Can they just show up, or is what, how does a kid get involved over at Santa Clara Parks and Recreation? It depends on a, lot, a lot on the activity. We do have a new youth facility that's a gym, and the kids can drop in there every day and play. Mm -hmm. In addition, we have classes that they would sign up for on an eight-week basis, let's say ballet or karate lessons or something like that, and they would need to sign up in advance. The sports leagues, they need to sign up in advance. Going to the parks or participating in any of the, the just open programs, it's just a drop-in basis. Okay. Now, with the uh, Santa Clara Parks and Re Recreation, I'm, I'm sure it encompasses a number of places where kids would go, mm -hmm. let's say uh, centers. Um, what are some of the centers that, uh, that kids could uh, go to? In Santa Clara, we have a community center in Central Park, which is quite large, that has ceramics facilities, a photography lab. We have a children's theater that works out of there, um, classrooms, preschools, after-school um, daycare programs. That's one of our facilities. In addition, we have um, a, youth, a youth gym, which I mentioned earlier is a, a sports facility just for children. Those are their two main facilities. In addition, we have about 15 to 20 parks throughout the city that have buildings, some with activities. We also let the community groups, like the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and those groups use those facilities for free okay. to participate. Now, you, uh, you did mention that uh, uh, daycare, mm -hmm. um, and I think, uh, Dennis, you mentioned daycare as well. How, did, how is uh, daycare in parks and recreation or children's ministry uh, associated at all. I mean, is is sometimes getting kids involved, some parents just love to drop, drop them off so they can go off and do things. How does daycare intermingle or the concept of daycare intermingle with your, uh, with your organization, Dennis? Well, at Bethel, we, we encourage the parents to um, 
uh, to get involved in some type of an adult program. Uh, we try to discourage where they just come on a, um, a Sunday or Wednesday and just drop their children off because the church offers all kinds of programs for all ages and we try to funnel those parents and so uh, uh, using the term daycare is really kind of a, a loose term it, it's just that we offer programs for the children uh, and they don't um, during the school year and they don't cost anything and um, so we, we we welcome we welcome the whole family to our programs because we have something for everybody at every age Okay. Julie, same question. Okay. Uh, um, we do not have a daycare per se. Um, our approach to recreation is trying to educate children as well as give them fun opportunities. Um, daycare is a real issue and it's a real um, need in our community and our city addresses it in various ways. Our school district has taken the bulk of the responsibility to offer, a, offer after school latchkey programs and we provide enrichment activities for that. Our, the recreation staff sends out leaders and to help with those programs. Um, we don't have very many programs that per se will take um, a child from 7 in the morning till 6 at night. In the summertime we do offer one program that's geared towards the arts and arts education that it has extended care around it and it is quite popular simply because the need is there. Mm -hmm. What kind of impact do you think you have in these children's lives or what kind of impact do you wish to have as a coordinator of Santa Clara Parks and Recreation? <laughs> Keep saying that. <laughs> the whole we'll, say, thing. we'll just say uh, PNR. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I hope to have a positive impact. I hope to teach children um, lifetime skills and habits and hobbies that they would take with them so that they would keep away from, let's say, deviant activities. Mm -hmm. um, while we do not really address the spiritual needs or cannot really get involved in the family needs, um, we can take good care of them while they're there and give them positive experiences that they can take with them throughout the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. Now, Dennis, I know that, that definitely if you're in a church setting that you're, you're, you have some other impact that you want to have in these lives. What, are, what is the overall picture that you're trying to accomplish uh, in the children's ministry? I'm trying to build a, uh, a spiritual foundation for these children so that when we graduate them into the junior high year, that they will have a strong biblical concept of uh, who God is and why Jesus Christ came to this planet and, and their purpose and their relationship with the Lord. And so we, we believe in starting at a very young age. And so we train our staff that in the nursery, when those babies first are, are, are brought to that nursery to just meet their physiological needs and to, to have an atmosphere that is uh, uh, one of love and, and, and care for those children. And so I'm very selective in the, in the staff for those babies. And then in the preschool years, we're trying to build the simple foundations of truth of who God is, that God made them and, and that they're special. And when they get into grade school, then we teach them um, um, all the basic Bible truths and how to use the Bible and what the Bible says about who God is and what God expects from their life and what he wants from them and so forth. And um, we do it at different stages so they can understand and grasp it. Can I add something earlier about, you asked about daycare. Um, we see the need in Santa Clara County, Julie, and so this September, hopefully, um, Bethel Church is going to be able to work with the community. We are setting up a, a daycare center where we'll be able to take in um, uh, children from age two to age five before they enter school. Now you're setting that up where? At Bethel Church. Oh, okay. And well, you, you were using the word daycare earlier, okay. and um, this is something that we see a need in our, in our community, and we hope to have it up and running this, this September. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I gotta ask you, it's, it's an uncomfortable uh, subject, in, you know, within the subject, and that's, uh, you know, what, what do you, what's your responsibilities when you see a situation where there's child abuse, either mental or physical? Uh, what does your organization have to do? What do you have to do as an individual in particular, Julie? It is state law that if we, um, if any of our staff or myself um, see any situation where we suspect that a child is abused or, you know, coming against some you know, difficulty at home, we need to notify the police, we need to notify the authorities, and they start a case on it. And we need to document whenever we suspect anything, if there's bruises or, you know, just unusual behavior that we suspect is child abuse. Okay, so it's not unlike a, a school system in that? It's very similar. Okay. It's very similar. Same responsibilities. And Dennis? Same as what Julie uh, just mentioned. Um, even though pastors um, are supposed to keep things in uh, confidential, uh, but uh, when it comes to suspicion of child abuse, we have to report it to the social 
workers and also to the authorities, police department, and document the, uh, the findings. Okay. And what, is there any uh, situations where sometimes you feel that, that you sense something like that and you want to kind of intervene, but there's not really any evidence of it? But what would you do in a role, uh, situation like that? Well, personally, we've had situations like that where we just, um, you know, we watch the situation as carefully as we can. Just monitor and, it. Yeah, just monitor it, notify the police. You know, we have a situation right now that we're monitoring, and any time we suspect anything, we call the police out, and we figure if we keep doing it enough, you know, that somebody's going to do something about it eventually. Okay. Um, I think personally, I always want to, I always want to take control and do a little bit more than, you know, sometimes you can. Okay. Uh, when we come back, we're going to take a short break here, but when we get back, we're going to talk more of the positive sides of children's programs. Are you guys getting excited about maybe talking a little bit? <laughs> yeah, okay. Figured you might be. Um, but before we take a break, I want to thank California Mortgage for sponsoring us, as they always do. Uh, and if you're interested in refinancing, if you're purchasing a home for the first time, if you've got any questions as far as uh, financial matters, uh, real estate loans, please give me a call at 559-0100. When we get back, we'll talk to these little darlings. We're talking about children's programs uh, tonight, and uh, we've got Julie Size along with Dennis Atalagano. We've also got, let me introduce this time too, we've got Tim, we've got uh, Jessica, we've got Tanya, and we've got Jeanette over here. And they're gonna, we're going to have a chance to talk with them a little bit and a ask them what their reaction to the programs that they've been involved in are. Um, but Julie, first of all, what are some of the programs that uh, kids can get involved? What are some of the main events that you have throughout the year? Throughout the year, like special events? Sure. Okay, special events. I meant that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like we a main a event <laughs> wrestling contest or something. Right. <laughs> well, every special event that we have, we incorporate something for children. Um, we have an art and wine festival that attracts um, about thirty-five to 40,000 that we have a kid's kingdom in. And with the kid's kingdom, we have a petting zoo and arts activities for the children to become involved with, bouncing booths, just all kinds of things. So it's a family affair. Um, in addition to the art and the food and wine and things. Um, in addition, we have a 4th of July all-city picnic. We have a carnival, carnival booth for children, a fun run, pancake breakfast, lots of food, of course. And at Easter time, we have an Easter extravaganza egg hunt, where that draws about four or 5,000 people. It goes very quick, but it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Great. And Dennis, same thing? What's, what are some programs that, that you Some of our programs on? besides your regular Sunday school and children's church activities, and Wednesday night programs. We have, um, uh, at Easter time, we have our uh, Easter egg hunt. Now, I don't draw four or 5,000 <laughs> like Julie at her <laughs> program, but I draw about 300 children mm -hmm. from Bethel and from the, uh, uh, their fr friends in the neighborhood. And that takes place usually the Saturday before Easter, and the children just enjoy going out on the property and trying to find those eggs and the special prizes. Um, Christmas time, we have a Christmas program, Christmas party for the children. We do a special program um, every other month for the uh, elementary children. It's called a prayer breakfast, where we have them come early on Saturday morning at about 8.30, and we feed them breakfast, and then um, they give a little lecture on, on the importance of prayer, and then um, we actually uh, take prayer requests from the children and have them pray for each other. Mm -hmm. And that usually goes from 8.30 till 10 o'clock. Then as we get closer to the summer, we, have, uh, we offer uh, vacation Bible school it's a morning activity for one week, and uh, this year it's uh, going to be June the 24th through the 28th from ages 2 to age 12. And um, what takes place there is we have different type of activities in the morning, recreation, music. Uh, they go to their classroom uh, to have their Bible lesson and crafts and a snack. And the theme is uh, a Western theme this year. Then uh, later on in the summer in July, we offer day camps. And they are done for the different school grades. And I do all well, two different day camps. The first one is for grades one through three. And uh, they're from nine in, the, nine in the morning till four in the afternoon. We have structured classes in the morning, crafts, a recreation time, a Bible lesson. Then in the afternoon, we take them out to different events mm -hmm. in the city. One day, they're going to go to Campbell Pool. Another is going to go up to the uh, San Francisco for a full day on a Friday to uh, take in the uh, zoo there. Um, we're going to go to the Children's Museum downtown, mm -hmm. and uh, we've, this year we're going to take the children to a, a Discovery Zone. It's a big gymnasium where they could just discover through 
jumping on trampolines and swinging on ropes and stuff. And it's just a, a fun place for children. Mm -hmm. And then um, we have a big promotion in, uh, on Labor Day weekend where we promote all the children into the next school uh, grade for their um, upcoming... Uh, a little graduation. Exactly. <laughs> we completed the year. One other thing I did forget, the church has a church picnic on Memorial Day. And my responsibility at that is that we have uh, carnival games for the children and we have all different kinds of prizes mm -hmm. for them if they play the games. And we keep them busy as the parents are enjoying the fellowship with other people in the church. Great. So there's always something going on for them there, too. Oh, definitely. And of course, that would be true with yours, Julie. Sure. I couldn't I imagine. I didn't mention our pools. We have lots oh, of do pools, you? too. Yeah, okay. we have five pools and swim lessons and day camps all throughout the summer as well. Okay. Um, I couldn't imagine 4,000 people. Is it just kids or people that are all at... Well, it's kids with adults, and we divide it up, and they're around like the softball field, and we kind of blow a whistle, and they just kind of like a vacuum go across to the middle. <laughs> no offense, Julie. I hate to see it at the end of the day. On the <laughs> it's a quick event. It's over in Is 10 it? seconds. Okay. If you show up five minutes late, you missed it. <laughs> okay. um, well, I want to ask the kids some questions, if you don't mind. Can I ask you guys some questions? Okay. First of all, Jeanette, with, with school, you, you go to school, correct? Yeah. And, and you're, you're at school, and all the activities going on at school and that type of thing. What's it like for you to, to go from a school events and do you ever get tired just, just getting more involved in more events when you're going get involved at, at Bethel Church? Oh, okay. Uh, what I meant is that with, with as much school as you're involved in, how does it feel? Do, do you enjoy the programs when you can go over to Bethel and, and get involved there as well or do you get really tired of, of always having to run around? How do you compare at school versus what you're doing over at Bethel Church? Well, I really enjoy the activities during the summer. They're really fun and it's a great time to socialize and have fun and learn more about God and what he's doing. Okay. So you've got you've got friends in both your school but at the same time you've got friends maybe that you have with the other. Um, one thing is that this might be one side a little bit is that all of them, all the kids here go to are involved in children's ministry at Bethel Church. We we're hoping to get some from the Santa Clara Parks and Recreation but uh, the time constraints on the kids uh, didn't allow for it. So. Um, Jessica, uh, one thing, who you got there right there? Granny. You got Granny? Okay. One thing is that you got these puppets from somewhere. Is puppet ministry something that you do a lot over at, uh, uh, at Bethel? Well, yeah, Pastor Dennis and a lot of other of his helpers do a lot of puppet shows for us. Okay. And Tanya, you, you've got a puppet too. What's your puppet's name? Mommy. Mommy? Okay. <laughs> uh, well, what, what's one of the favorite things that you like doing with, with all the other kids over at Bethel? Um, probably um, doing all the activities that we do. In, Is there any special like, activity, though? Um, like, we, in Sunday school, we have um, races, and I like doing races with all the other kids that are, in a, that are at our tables. It's really fun. You said you eat raisins at the table? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just did. You said raisins, didn't you? <laughs> and Tim, one thing, too, is that with video games and things like that, you probably don't get to play a lot of video games over at Bethel, correct? No. So well, what are some of these, uh, your favorite activities that you like, uh, or what are some of the favorite things that you like doing over there? Well, I like to go to on the Wednesday nights to Royal Rangers when they have the activities it's for the boys and girls. They have Royal Rangers, and then they have missionettes for the girls. Okay. And you can eat before you go. It's fun. Is that one of your favorite parts is eating? You don't yeah. get any food fights, do you? Or like no. That? <laughs> okay. Um, that's some of the kids here. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to talk about some of the programs. And I know you get the puppets. I'm sure that's a real part of your uh, program, Dennis. Um, but uh, what are some of the other things that you've got? And I, one thing is I want to give Dennis the opportunity. He brought a number of things here. What, what kind of the little things we use, do you have? We here? use the puppets on Sunday morning at Children's Church. We have the same type of service that an adult would have in, in, in uh, adult worship, just that our service is geared for children. And one of the things that... Um, I'm real strong in is the area of puppet ministry and also drama. So uh, what we have is uh, we have this stage and on the stage we have a, a pizza shop or a sandwich shop and we call it Papa Gino's uh, Sandwich Shop and I, I play this character Papa Gino, 64 year old man and my other workers they play the waitress and the, um, the cook and then we have um, children 
um, that we pick every week. We take six children out of the audience and actually have them come up on the stage and sit at a table and we feed them sandwiches. Some of the children, we actually give them scripts. Tim is really um, good in drama, and so we've, we use him frequently and give him a script, and he can, he can pretty much memorize those lines and get right up there and um, recite them and fall right into sync with what's happening in, the, in our skits. Mm -hmm. And the skits all lead up to what I'm going to preach on to the children at the end of, this, um, end of the program. Mm -hmm. And so then we, as uh, Jessica was mentioning, these are just a few of the puppets that the children see uh, from week to week in our store. And so the puppets come up and they interact with the children or they'll interact with me, who, who is Papa Gino or one of the other workers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Julie, the, do you have a chance for puppets, you know, at, at your group or what are some of the arts and crafts? Do they, do they make puppets or are they... Kids respond pretty well to those? Or? Yeah, they do. They really respond well to puppets. We have a theater program, a children's theater program that's been in, um, in existence for 22 years. That's quite strong and it gives children an opportunity to perform in plays. It's different in some other uh, children's theater programs in that everybody who auditions receives a part. Everybody. Oh, okay. And they get a real good training in theater. In fact, we're performing Peter Pan right now, complete with the flying. It's the musical version of Peter Pan. Complete with the what? Flying, you know, oh, Peter Pan flies. Oh, there's going to be somebody flies. flying across yeah, the thing? Yeah, Wendy, John, okay. Peter Pan. <laughs> what, what is something like that when you put a, a something on? What kind of liabilities do you have when you put on something like that? Somebody flies and they, you know, who's ever, you know, can control it, making sure they don't fall yeah. on the wall, doesn't do their part. But what kind of liabilities would you have, uh, you know, in putting in a lot of the different activities mm -hmm. that you have? Well, the city of Santa Clara is self-insured, and so we, we have risk managers who let us know what, what's good and what's not good to offer and, you know, what's acceptable. And this particular, with flying, it was designed by our city engineers and um, had to go through close scrutiny before we even allowed anybody up on the, on the pulleys. Okay. Then the same question, you know, I don't, I don't know what kind of a... Bethel has a, a, a big insurance policy for everybody who attends there for any of the activities and then I gauge I gauge with my staff what activities are really not safe for the children plus some of the seminars that I uh, allow myself to attend on children's uh, for children's pastors there's usually somebody uh, I take a class or two on uh, safety for children and things we need to be careful with and we really try to um, be cautious that our activities aren't going to be too rough to the particular age group. We don't want them to get hurt. We want them to enjoy mm -hmm. uh, their time at church and their activities that we offer. Okay. Um, I was referring to video games before. And uh, do you kids like video games? You you enjoy video games quite a bit? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What what are what are some of the neat video games that you have going on these days? Nintendo. Nintendo. Do you get to play Nintendo at home? Yes, yeah, sometimes. Okay. When you have time. When you have time. You know, I see some kids that, that are, they have a lot of, uh, I've, I've seen some uh, kids who are just in front of the Nintendo and playing games all the time. Uh, do your organizations have video games or discourage that, or what's the feeling on that? Or is we, we don't own any. Or, I mean, we don't have any video games. If we go on a special event, like go to Golfland or something like that, kids would need to bring their own money in order to play them. So we kind of try to discourage that. Okay. We don't offer any. Uh, <laughs> we don't have, we don't have any. We don't have Is any it because games. the expense on them, or it's just too expensive? <laughs> yeah. The reason why I'm bringing this up, I, I sometimes feel that, uh, no offense, kids, but I, sometimes I think with kids are when they're always in front of video games, uh, they're not learning particular skills or something like that. Do you have opinions on? I know each of you have children, um, so do you have an opinion one way or the other on that? I think so. Yeah. I mean, if. Brian, if children don't, um, they're not, not using their imaginations, if all they're doing is just sitting in front of a TV playing a game, you know, it's, it's kind of like they zone out and get into the game so much that they're not expanding other areas of their life. You know, like interpersonal skills, talking, playing with their siblings, um, you know, learning a skill, playing games, playing, being creative. They're not doing those kinds of things. Okay. So. Very good. I want to ask these kids a real quick question. What, Tim, what do you want to do when you grow up? That's a typical question, but... I don't know yet. Would you like to be a talk show host, maybe? Like me one day? <laughs> I don't know. He's just looking at me, he's going, no, no, I definitely don't want to be a talk show host. Jenna, what would you like to be, maybe, one day? Um, before, I wanted to be a beautician, but now I'm not sure. Okay. You never, you got beautiful hair. That's a Thank good you. start. <laughs> so, Tanya, what would you like to be when you grow up? I always wanted to be a missionary. Is that right? 
Oh, that's neat. When do you think you can do something like that? I don't know. Okay, just when it comes up. Yeah. Jessica, what would you like to be? I kind of wanted to be a secretary sometimes. A secretary? Okay. When you own your own company, too, ask me. I might be your own secretary maybe one day, too. <laughs> so, you know what? My, my thing is I'd like to be a kid again. So. But uh, anyway, thanks for, what's up, uh, for joining us here at What's Up in the 90s. I want to thank our guests, Julie and Dennis and the kids here. Thanks for being with us. But uh, next week, we've got a financial show. Don Glazer is going to be with us. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, having you join us next week. Good night.